Hello, today I am going to demonstrate a project named Prediction Analysis of Diabetes Patients using Random Forest Algorithm. Now about some brief introduction about diabetes patients in data mining. The recent report of World Health Organization shows a remarkable hike in the number of diabetic patients and this will be in the same patterns in the coming decades also. Early identification of diabetes is an important challenge. Data mining has played an important role in diabetes research. Data mining would be a valuable asset for diabetes researchers because it can unearth hidden knowledge from the huge amount of diabetics related data. That means in simple words you can say that the data mining is basically extracting the useful information from the huge amount of data. It is helpful for the diabetic researchers in such a way that means it can basically under unearth or you can say that it basically extract the hidden knowledge from the huge amount of historical uh, diabetic patient data. Now various data mining techniques help diabetes research and ultimately improve the quality of health care for the diabetes patients. Now in this project I am going to basically uh, uh, demonstrate or you can say that in this project we are basically analyzing one data mining technique that is random forest. Now what is this random forest technique? Random forest technique is basically a set of decision trees or you can say that it is basically the combination of decision trees. Now in this technique a set of decision trees are grown and each tree votes for the most popular class. Then the votes of the different trees are integrated and a class is predicted for each sample. That means a set of decision trees are grown and the votes or you can say that the probabilities of each and every decision tree is integrated in order to predict the uh, one class for that particular sample. In this approach we need to increase the accuracy of the decision tree. That means more trees are produced to vote for the class prediction. This approach is basically an ensemble classifier that is composed of some decision trees and the final result is a mean of individual trees result. That means each and every trees result is basically average or you can say that the average or average accuracy of each and every tree will correspond to the accuracy of that particular algorithm. Now what is this ensemble classifier over here? Ensemble classifier is basically a classifier that will increase the performance of the uh, data mining technique that means in this classifier in this technique we can basically combine various classifiers together that means similarly in random forest we are basically combining many decision trees together in order to form a forest that's why we can say that this technique is also an ensemble learning classifier now about the flow chart that like that means the flow how we can proceed with this project is that First one is the collection of data. The data can be collected from UCA repository like Pima's uh, hospital's data set is available over here for the diabetic patient. We need to collect that data set from that repository and after that we need to pre-process or filter that data in order to remove some kind of missing values or from some kind of outliers or you can say some kind of noise from the data. After that we need to classify that filter data using random forest technique in order to classify that data into positive or negative. That means patient with having the diabetes or patient with having uh, diabetes, uh, patient who is not suffering from the diabetes. After that we need to analyze the performance parameter of that particular algorithm. The tool used for this project is Java JDK 1.8 NetBeans with Weka as an external library. Now I am going to demonstrate the same project into NetBeans. What we will do is that right click to the main file that is a graphical user interface file and click to the run file button. Now it will show me one interface in which I need to browse the data set. Now I am going to browse the data set over here. That is diabetes data set. This data set I have collected from UCA repository. Now I will click to this data set. The content of that data set has been shown over here. That is a data set content over here. Now you can see that here we have tested negative. That means the patient with who is not suffering from the diabetes. Tested positive means the patient who is suffering from diabetes. 
these are basically the whole data set and these this data set is basically the training data set after that we will get to the next button in order to pre-process or filter that data here i have used one filter named replace missing value filter what it will do it will basically the replace the value of that particular column or you can say that particular instance value uh, uh, the, uh, the column value uh, basically it will replace with the mean of that particular column value that means if we have a question mark over here let's suppose we have 127 over here let's suppose we have question mark over here that means this one is a missing value it will basically replace this value with either the average of that particular column or you can or by checking the neighboring values of that particular instance in order to fill out that value now we click to the next button in order to apply the random forest classification what we will do is that I will click to the random forest button and here are the results of the classification. What it has basically predicted is that out of 768 instances, it has correctly predicted 567 instances. That corresponds to 73.82% of accuracy. After that we have 201 instances that are incorrectly classified. That corresponds to 26.17% accuracy. Now we have Kappa statistic. Kappa statistics basically denotes the correlation between the actual values and the predicted value. Its value more close to 1 means that we have a very good, uh, you can say that we have a very good prediction result. After that we have some error rates over here like mean absolute error, root mean squared error, something like that. After that we have confusion matrix and detailed class accuracy. That means a true positive rate, false positive rate, precision, recall, F measure. All these are basically the calculated from the confusion matrix. Now what is this confusion matrix? Confusion matrix denotes that the sum of diagonal elements that is 173 plus 394 that will correspond to 567. And the sum of non-diagonal elements that is 106 plus 95 corresponds to incorrectly classified instances. Now this 173 denotes a true positive that means we have total positive cases is 173 plus 95. Out of these, 173 cases are predicted positive and 95 cases are predicted incorrectly. Now, uh, out of, uh, in case of negative, we have 106 plus 394 instances or the patients having the diabetes result negative. Out of these, 394 patients are correctly classified and 106 patients are incorrectly classified. That means this one is a true positive, 173 values for the true positive, 394 values for the true true negative. That means true positive plus true negative corresponds to the correctly classified instances. And similarly this one is a true positive, this one is a false positive and this one is a false negative value. False positive plus false negative corresponds to the incorrectly classified instances. I hope you have learned a lot from this lecture. Thank you so much for listening.